In this physcast, I want to explore finding the center of mass. Now the equation shown here is how we can find the center of mass for discrete systems. So it's basically the sum of the moments divided by the sum of the masses. A discrete system is where you might have two objects, which you can treat as discrete point particles, and they're some distance apart. And this one has mass m, this one might have mass 3m, and you might want to find out where that center of mass is. It's pretty straightforward. The center of mass here is equal to mass times its position. So let's say that this is zero and they're separated by some length L. So this coordinate for the mass of 3m is L. X looks like it's increasing positive to the right. So we just multiply the mass by its position for the first mass plus the second mass 3m times its position divided by the sum of the masses, which is 4 times the mass here. So we can see, in this case, we end up with something which is 3 quarters of the length. The center of mass, the place where this would balance, um, would be at 3 over 4 L. That's easy if we've got a discrete system. What happens when we've got a continuous system? So in this case, if we've got something like a continuous length, a plank of wood, <coughs> for instance, of uniform density, let's say that plank of wood is from naught to L long, and it happens to be H high, how can we find the, the center of mass along the, the X direction? And because this object has some width, it's also going to have a center of mass coordinate along the Y direction as well. So in this situation up here, we'll sort of 1D, this is more of a 2D kind of problem, so we're going to expect to have an X center of mass and a Y center of mass. But more importantly, it's not discrete, it's a continuous object. So you've got to ask yourself, well, where are the where are the masses here? Well, they're everywhere, so we have to basically turn this summation into an integral. That is that we're going to pick a very, very small element of mass, which we're going to call dm here. And so the idea is to let this the sum over all of the masses um, along the length of this object. So we can write down the integral form of the center of mass, which basically means that summation becomes an infinite sum, turns into an integral, the integral of x, that's the position of the mask um, element dm, so it's still um, the position x coordinate times some element of mass divided by um, the total mass, okay, the sum of all the masses. And this looks a little bit confronting to start with because for one thing, you know, x is a position coordinate and m is a mass, so how can you possibly integrate these two things? Usually these have to, or I should say, always you have to have the same variables when you do integration. And so what we have to do is find a way of representing um, dm in terms of x. And so the, the, the strategy for doing this, which is included in the notes, is basically to look at the ratio, okay, the ratio of an element of mass to the total mass and realize that for a uniform density object then this ratio of the this little element of mass to its total mass mass is going to be the same as the ratio of the area whatever the area of this little bit of mass is divided by the total area of the object if you can make that connection then you're pretty much there so all we need to do now is from the geometry of the object work out an expression for this area. Now normally we'd say that this little uh, width here um, uh, is uh, dx, so uh, x is going, we'll take x being the coordinate which goes along to the right hand side. Uh, so it has a width of dx, we can make that infinitely small. And then the, the area of this little rectangle here is basically going to be equal to its width dx times its height, in this case happens to be h, and what's the area of the total um, uh, the total area of this plank of wood here? Well you can see there it's l long um, and it's h high, so it's l times h. In fact those two h's cancel, and so we just end up with this ratio dm over m is equal to dx over l. So our x center of mass coordinate becomes equal to the integral of um, x times, well what's dm over m? 
it's in this case now dx divided by L uh, and because L is a constant we can take it outside of the uh, integral symbol. Now we do need to have some limits of integration it's the same as the, the when we think about the summation we'd be summing up all of the masses so we'd start at this end here and sum it to the next one, the next one, the next one and so you can see that the summation is really going to go well, the integral is really going to go from 0 uh, to L here. And once we've written this, so we can see that this integral has variables which are the same as the ones we're integrating with respect to, so we can evaluate that. So we've got 1 over L, integral of x becomes a half x squared, evaluated at the limits, so the upper limit is L, the lower limit is 0, so that becomes 1 over L times 1 half times L squared minus 1 half times 0 squared, so which is 0 the second term. So an L cancels with this L here, we end up with this just equaling L over 2, which kind of makes sense. In the x direction, um, uh, the center of mass coordinate lies halfway along at L over 2. That's the x coordinate. What about the y coordinate? Well, very similarly, the y center of mass coordinate is equal to the integral of y times the element of mass divided by the mass. How do we do that? Well, we can once again take a very small slither. In this case, it's very. It's, this is the sort of simplest and trivialist example I could think of. Um, it has some width here, dy. What we have to do is once again find that ratio dm over m, and writing that in terms of the area. Now, uh, in this particular case, we can say that that um, dm over m is equal to that area of this little um, horizontal rectangle and it's going to have a height now of dy times the length of L divided by okay, um, the area uh, of the total um, uh, plank of wood uh, which is uh, going to be once again uh, L times H. So now the L's cancel okay, um, and if we write down explicitly what that um, integral is now, the y center of mass integral is going to be equal to um, the integral of y multiplied by dm over m, which is now um, dy, and we've got 1 over h outside. But what about the limits of integration? Well, once again, we're going to think about what we're doing here is we're going to be, um, this, this integral is really a summation, so we're going to be adding up the little element of mass down the bottom, the horizontal element, plus the one next to it, plus the one next to it, so we're integrating along the y direction, so we go from y is equal to 0, to its maximum value, which is y equals h. And so you can see here, once again, uh, if we evaluate this, we'll end up with 1 over h, we'll have a half um, times uh, y squared, and now that evaluated at h uh, will be h squared minus a uh, half y squared at 0, so we get 0 there. Um, the h is cancelled, and we're going to get uh, 1 half times h, or h over 2. So halfway up, um, and, uh, and um, halfway along, is where our center of mass is. So the coordinate for this guy here is uh, L over 2 for X and H over 2 uh, for Y. It's the most simple and most trivial example, but it's really very straightforward. It's the same kind of process that you would use uh, for more complicated shapes.